Hi, my name is Sarah, this is Jess, and this is Leah, and we're gonna to talk to you today about unclogging feeding tubes. So feeding tubes are used in critical care medicine very frequently as a way for us to give medications and get nutrition in our patients. Um, and they're really effective and simple to use, but sometimes we run into problems with things like medications um, or even their own mucus getting clogged in the tube. And when these tubes clog, it can be really problematic. If you're unable to get them unclogged, they need to be replaced. Um, so the technicians, um, technicians that are used to using these have some little tips on how to get them unclogged. The patients that are more susceptible to getting clogs in their tubes are ones that are like Leia, where they have really tiny noses and require really small tubes. So the diameter of the tube is really small and things are much more likely to get clogged. So one thing that I always try first is just to flush with um, tap water. This is going into our stomach. We placed this tube several days ago and we know for sure that it's in our stomach. So tap water is okay. We don't eat things that are sterile all the time. Um, and we know for sure where this tube is located. So I always am trying to be really conscientious of volumes that I give these small patients because um, not only is their nose small, but their little stomachs are small too. And if I were to put a bunch of fluid in there, that could make her nauseous um, and more likely to regurgitate um, or vomit. So the first thing I'm gonna do to try to unclog her tube is use tap water. I have quite a bit drawn up here, um, but I'm not gonna use it all. So I'm gonna actually squirt a little bit out and um, I'm gonna just put it on the end here. I'm gonna try to aspirate back and see if I can use negative pressure to pull out the clog, and it just doesn't really wanna go. Um, so I always try that first, just in case I wanna get lucky. And the next thing I'm gonna do is try to pulse tap water in. Her clog is pretty good, so I'm unable to pulse that through, um, but sometimes I would try that a little bit and then give it a break and come back. Um, but we can also move on to our next option, which the next thing I try for really challenging um, clogs in feeding tubes is I use a carbonated soda. So I go upstairs into our break room and I buy a Coca-Cola and I'm gonna use that um, to try to break up the clog. So sometimes just the extra effect of carbonated bubbles can be really helpful in breaking up that, that clog that's in there, whether it's mucus or medications. And I'm just going to drop a small amount. This has sugar in it and other things that she doesn't really need and too much carbonation would probably be irritating on her. So just make sure you're not using too much. There's not a set amount, but for her, I'm gonna start with half a cc because she's just so small. And I'm likely not gonna easily be able to push this all in there, but I'm gonna do the same thing um, by putting it on the end and I'm gonna pulse it in. I'm just gonna be a little bit more forceful here. Okay, and I was able to pulse that in. And what we're gonna do now is close this and we're gonna wait about 10 minutes and we're gonna see if that carbonation was effective in breaking up the clog. Okay, so we've waited about 10 minutes and now I'm gonna come back in with this tap water. I always, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I try to get warm water as opposed to cold water. Just that added warmth seems to be a little bit more likely to break up the clog. Um, okay, and sometimes this requires a pulse, but you can see there, it's actually going pretty easily. So our cook worked in that situation. It's fantastic. Um, other things that I have heard people doing um, in really extreme measures is reintroducing like a stylet into the nasogastric tube. For me, that's definitely my last option. Um, I think that it's really hard to get it around the bends of the tube and your suture. And I think it can be a little bit uncomfortable for the patients as you go back through their nasal passages. But if your clog were to be in the middle here or kind of higher up as opposed to in her nose or all the way down in her stomach, uh, the stylet can actually be effective on kind of breaking up that clog as well. But just use that with caution. Um, another option that people have used successfully is sodium bicarb. Uh, most of us carry this in our crash carts um, or just on the hospital shelf. And a little bit of bicarb can 
um, be effective for the same kind of thought process as the Coca-Cola. Same type of considerations with sodium bicarb is that we want to just be really careful about the amount that we're giving and using to um, unclog the tube because too much of it could cause um, some metabolic derangements that we definitely don't want in these critical patients. Uh, but that's how we unclog um, nasal gastric tubes.